Greetings, everyone, and welcome. I'm the Chancellor Soul Mike Boone, and you've tuned in to another edition of Soul Facts, a show highlighting the history and music of legendary artists and preserving their legacy. Falsetto, Italian diminutive of falso, meaning false. Its definition, a method of voice production used by male singers, especially pertaining to tenors, to sing notes higher than their normal range, maintaining it with an octave that's unnaturally high. One of the great R&B pioneers of essential falsetto singing during the genesis of doo-wop was a gentleman whose unique and angelic vocals set a standard for future R&B soul. Soul Facts Spotlight Artist, Mr. Clyde McFadder. Clyde Lansley McFadder was born November 15, 1932 in Haiti, Durham, North Carolina, a historical tobacco town located in the Afro-American district. His musical career began at the age of five when he sang with his six siblings in his father's Baptist church. Clyde was so gifted he was out front soloing for the choir at age 10. The McFadder family moved to Teaneck, New Jersey, where Clyde attended Chelsea High School and tasked at odd jobs such as store clerking, but later he was promoted as a manager. The family then journeyed to New York City when Clyde formed his first gospel group, the Mount Lebanon Singers, as a team. He soon left the Mount Lebanon Singers and appeared at the world famous Apollo Theater Amateur Night in 1950 and won. Not trusting his faith, Clyde went back to his managing job but was recruited by Billy Ward to sing lead tenor in his group, The Dominoes. The group signed with Federal Records, a subsidiary of the King imprint. From 1950 to 1953, McFadder, along with the Dominoes, released some of the greatest R&B cuts during the early 50s that later became instant classics, such as So baby, can't you see? Do something for me. You must do something for me. Minute Man. Minute man. That's what you're doing to me. Have mercy, baby. Clyde being a lead singer was billed as Clyde Ward, Billy Ward's brother, which really irritated him. People often thought that Billy Ward sang lead, as the records were later credited as Billy Ward and the Dominoes. Now, Billy Ward was a strict disciplinarian who believed in punctuality and would unfairly deduct the group's salary for studio time, meals, and hotel accommodations. The Domino members were paid $100 a week's salary. Clyde once said, I'd go home and hear my records on the radio, and half the time I couldn't afford a Coca-Cola. Clyde and Billy Ward would often get into disagreements pertaining his money. Growing weary of Ward's domineering, 
McFadden expresses feelings of leaving the group. Ward agreed, but asked him to stay and guide a young replacement who just won a Domino's tryout at the Fox Theater. His name was Jackie Wilson, who idolized McFadden. Now, after Jackie was groomed and joined the group, Clyde soon parted ways and never looked back. In May of 1953, Clyde McFadden left the Dominoes. Atlantic Records founders Armand Octagon and Herb Abramson were present at a Domino's performance at Birdland. When they noticed that Clyde wasn't present, they scurried to find him. Clyde was seated at a local furniture room in Harlem where they both made their negotiations with him. Clyde was signed to Atlantic Records in an agreement to find a group to center him like the Dominoes. He did find one, and they were named the Drifters. The Drifters' first session took place on June 29, 1953, with the first lineup, in which, after a few recordings, turned out to be a disaster. So a new lineup was recruited. New members included Gerhard Thrasher, Willie Furby, Andrew Thrasher, and the great bassist Bill Pinckney, along with Clyde McFadder, became the great lineup of the hit-making drifters. Starting off with hit makers like Money Honey, Such a night. Backed up with Lucille. Honey Love. And so many others. One of the most celebrated recordings of the Drifters catalog is their version of White Christmas, recorded on February 4th, 1954. Armand Octagon and Jerry Wexler had to get permission from songwriter Irvin Berlin in fear of a court case. So they sent him a dub, and Mr. Berlin was very happy with the results. The recording itself is reminiscent of the Ravens' 1948 version on the national imprint with bassist Jimmy Ricks on lead. You may say it was a carbon copy, but the results did work. In March 1954, Clyde received his draft notice. He continued to record and make appearances with the Drifters until his induction toward the end of 1954. He was stationed at Fort Dix and served on the special services where luckily he didn't have to travel overseas. While on leave, he teamed up with Ruth Brown and recorded some duet sides, including their number eight R&B hit, Love Has Joined Us Together, released in December of 1955. During the 
Learning and Professional Association, Clyde and Ruth began a steamy extramarital affair while she was in a pretend marriage with jazz great Willis Gator Tail Jackson, in which later produced a son named Ron. Years later, Ruth Brown revealed that Clyde McFadder was the actual father. Ron David McFadder followed in his parents' footsteps and became an actor who portrayed legendary singer Tony Williams of the Platters in the 1998 movie Why Do Fools Fall in Love, starring Lorenz Tate, Halle Berry, Vivica A. Fox, and Layla Rishon. Clyde McFadder's success continued as he appeared in his first movie appearance in the Alan Freed rock musical Mr. Rock and Roll in 1957. Clyde left the Drifters as soon as he was discharged from the Army. He wanted a substantial amount of the group's earnings. So thinking that he would profit more, he sold the name mark ownership of the Drifters to manager George Treadwell, a former jazz trumpeter who played with J.C. Hurd, a swing bop drummer from the 1940s, and was the husband of jazz singer great Miss Sarah Vaughn. Treadwell was a tightwad, and by McFadden giving away most of his name stock pertaining to Drifters, the Drifters saw no profits whatsoever and not even made a decent salary. So over the years, George Treadwell succeeded by keeping the name stock and the dividends. With the dominoes, the drifters, and the armed forces behind him, Clyde McFadden looked forward to a productive future as a solo artist. But during his progressions, he would endure a few obstacles to hinder his destination to succeed. 